All right, well, we've got some breaking news again to get to. President Biden making a surprise visit to Kyiv, Ukraine. That happened within the last two hours, just days ahead, as we mark the one-year anniversary since Russia began its invasion of the country. The trip planned and carried out in secret by the U.S. military and the Secret Service. The White House press corps unaware this was happening. Ukrainian President Zelensky greeting Mr. Biden, the two holding a briefing moments ago to discuss those long-range weapons. Here is President Biden. One year later, Kyiv stands, and Ukraine stands, democracy stands, the Americans stand with you, and the world stands with you. Joining me now is the Federalist D.C. columnist, Eddie Scary. Eddie, uh, good morning to you. Your thoughts on this surprise trip by the president? Um, it's certainly a surprise, <laughs> um, but it, it's, I guess, not the most unexpected thing in the world. Um, this administration has been obsessing over Ukraine and everything we can do to Ukraine. He already sent his wife, I think, a few minutes, uh, a few months ago. Um, so this is just the natural course of events. But I would say that it, it, it in a lot of ways, is is somewhat escalating our involvement with Ukraine, and I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing. Well, that's the question here, Eddie, and I know Mike Lee wants to jump in as well and talk to you, but, you know, it's another $500 million pledge. Uh, there's, there's still talk about F-16s. We, we, we think we're going to hear more from President Biden later today, whether or not they're going to talk about jets going to Ukraine, uh, you know, take, take the, the ward of the skies in particular as far as our support goes. We're already $30 billion, though in with Ukraine. And uh, Senator Lindsey Graham over the weekend made a comment, look, this, this can't be a, a blank check. You know, obviously what's happened to the Ukrainian people, to the country, is, is horrible. It's devastating, and nobody wants to see Vladimir Putin uh, take over Ukraine. At the same time, how much can the American taxpayer handle as we move forward in this? What's your thought? Well, Zelensky certainly acts like it's a blank check. I think every time he's on TV, he's asking, he's he's demanding that the West do more from him, in particular the U.S. Uh, we're footing about 75 percent of, of the total cost so far of this war, with no end in sight, as you just said, where Biden is pledging yet more millions of dollars to Ukraine. It's, it's become this bottomless pit now. Um, and I, I don't see much resistance, even from the little, <laughs> the little remarks from Lindsey Graham. There is very, very little resistance to any of this in Washington. I think Marjorie Taylor Greene is a pretty vocal um, critic of this, but but it, it, it's fairly marginal when you look at people who are actually saying, we need a full accounting of where the money is going, what use it's being put to, and, and, and what American interests are in any of this. You know, that is something that's severely lacking in Washington. Yeah, hi, Eddie. Michael Lee here. Um, you, you've got a piece out on the increased size of the IRS and the audits that are going to be stepped up. Um, just just wondering, how many of these people that are going to be audited are gung-ho about the tens of billions of dollars going to Ukraine with the use of the audit funds? <laughs> right. You could ask them. You could ask um, any of the people in Ohio. What do you feel, what do you feel about uh, the, 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 the endless fistfuls of money that seem to be going to Ukraine? And yet here we are dealing with the inflation, dealing with toxic spills. Planes are almost crashing into each other. Uh, supply chain issues, uh, random balloons flying into our airspace, um, and on and on it goes. But, yes, I think this is, this is interesting with the, the incoming IRS commissioner who, who's pledging um, that we'll see more equity when it comes to tax audits. I'm sure that's really exciting to a lot of people. I also want to talk to you about this, uh, switching gears again with you. Former Pennsylvania gubernatorial candidate Doug Mastriano recording video of a creek. This is near East Palestine, Ohio, over the weekend. I want you to watch this and get your reaction. I'm Senator Doug Mastriano. I'm south of East Palestine, Ohio, ground zero for the derailment. We're on Leslie Run, just below the city. And uh, looks fine if you glance at it, but watch what happens when I, when I disturb the waterbed. Look at these chemicals. Look at those colors. There's a kind of a stench, a butane kind of stench coming out just by moving the riverbed around a little bit. That's all sitting in the bed of the river. And just to add insult to injury to the people of Ohio, FEMA just got onto the ground to give them assistance. Right. I think it took a total of two weeks before 
Um, anybody in the administration even acknowledged this and then immediately told everyone, it's, it's fine, go home. You're seeing the images there. That doesn't look fine. People are having trouble breathing. Um, the, the chemicals are, are, are that, that, they, that they know that detonated there that are spreading, um, that has spread, uh, is, increases the risk of cancer. Um, and yet you had the, the White House saying, well, this isn't really something we can deal with right now. What do you have? We're looking at President Biden now showing up in Ukraine. Meanwhile, people in Ohio are, are, are under real uh, under real health risk, health hazard, um, and, and, and no one in the administration really seems to care. It's a complete afterthought. Yeah. Well, and that's already been pointed out this morning that, that maybe his visit should have been to Ohio first before uh, Ukraine. Eddie Scary, thank you very much for being here, Eddie. We appreciate it.